Hey everyone, today we're going to film me doing a workout with my favourite personal trainer Paul Haslam at City Gym. G'day, how he's going? So there's the great man, Paul Haslam, and I honestly don't have enough time in this video to go through all of Paul's achievements. I'd recommend you Google him, Paul Haslam, H-A-S-L-A-M, and you can read up all about him and his experience on his website. But to put a long story short, Paul is known in Sydney as the granddaddy of bodybuilding. I uh, don't know that he'd be happy with the title of granddaddy, but anyway, that's that's how we see him. Uh, just just extremely experienced in, in the fitness industry. And uh, I always get an excellent workout with him. Um, so we're here at City Gym and Probably one of the main reasons why I love City Gym so much is the environment that's there. City Gym was a mostly a bodybuilding gym that started around the 80s. I'm not too familiar with its history. Again, you can read all about that on their own website. But what I've noticed is it's full of people who, who truly are passionate about fitness. Um, there's a lot of interesting personalities there, I think. Anybody who's really, really into fitness, we can't help but be somewhat vain uh, and have a degree of body dysmorphia, probably. We're into the way we look, and I make no secret of it. Uh, when I first engaged with Paul, I said, Paul, look, I'm not really training for anything other than the mirror. I'm, I'm a victim of vanity. Um, I just want to look good. To me, it's important to, to look the part as a health practitioner. Years ago, I went and saw a doctor and it was just a, a standard checkup. I had to have a, a physical done for, a, for something else I was pursuing and I couldn't help but notice that he was overweight, like grossly overweight. And I just thought I never want to be in that position uh, where I'm telling somebody, hey, this is, this is what you should be doing, whereas it, it might be clear as day that I'm not doing it myself. Uh, you know, hypocrite comes to, to mind. And uh, yeah, when it comes to my fitness, I just, um, predominantly I just want to look good, of course, but uh, I also want to be somewhat of an inspiration to my patients. And uh, I don't for a second claim to be an Adonis uh, from, a, from a physical perspective, but um, you know, amidst the busy life that I run, I try to keep as fit as I can and, and looking good. And it helps when you're in an environment surrounded by people who are into the same thing. People who really want to try and push the boundaries and get as fit as they can. Okay, so we're doing leg press. We're doing single, single, double. We do 12 on one leg, 12 on the other, and then either 12 or 15 reps. This is the Watson, Watson leg press. Really, really good. <laughs> the other reason I like to keep fit and strong, aside from looking good and wanting to be an inspiration to my patients, is the simple fact that my job is hugely physically demanding. At least in my opinion, I think it is. When I was going through university learning how to be a chiropractor, there was a strong emphasis on technique and how superior technique will facilitate better adjustments and that you know manipulating joints of the body is less about force and more about technique and 
I do agree with that, but economies of scale say that, uh, you know, if you're dealing with somebody who's 120, 130 kilos, I don't care how good your technique is, it's going to require a, a base level of strength to shift joints. And, you know, I've, I've adjusted people from all walks of life, big, tall, little, small, strong, you name it. And yeah, sometimes joints are really, really stuck and you've just got to smash it. Uh, now you have to be careful uh, when, when you do that. Of course, there's no smashing going on, but um, it requires some brute force sometimes to shift a stubborn joint. And yeah, I think you need to be strong. You don't necessarily need to be str so strong that you have to squat 200 kilos, but yeah, I just think you just have to be um, physically strong. And, and um, you know, when you're seeing 15, 20 patients a day, uh, which for me is a lot. Um, it's really taxing on your body. You get really, really tired because not only is it physically demanding, as I say, every practitioner will know that it's mentally draining because each patient that you see is essentially a new meeting and you've got to bring brand new energy to that meeting. Um, it doesn't matter if it's the end of the day or the start of the day. To them, that's the one time that they're seeing you. And they, because they're paying you good money, they deserve to get you at your best. And that's why I take it upon myself to commit to being fit and healthy. So let's get back to the workout and talk to you a little bit about what I did on this particular day. I wanted to do a leg day because I think leg days are really hard and a lot of people say they love leg day. I think anybody who says they love leg day is either lying or not working hard enough because I hate it. Uh, leg day, particularly with Paul, is really, really hard and I never look forward to it because it's, it always leave me, leaves me gutted. Um, and I have to limp out of the gym room and um, usually have to go back work and uh, summon up the, the energy to, to deliver to my patients. Um, now, I say this all in jest a little bit because yes, I, I do love leg day. I, I understand that when we say that, we mean that we love the endorphins that go through our body and we, we love the feeling of the pump and that we've worked hard all of that stuff, yes, but uh, that's just my little joke. If you love leg day, you're not working hard enough. Um, and what's interesting about this particular workout is uh, we only did three exercises. We did this leg press. Then we'll move on to this. It's not a pendulum leg press, but it's, it's a version of a pendulum leg press. It's got a slightly shorter axis. So I'll uh, talk about that in a moment. And then we finished off with some hammy curls. And that's just three exercises. Uh, but it took a whole hour. And you'll note this video is only about 20 minutes long. Um, it's interesting how, you know, we say we go to the gym for an hour. But this video being 20 minutes long, not all of which is me working out, there's probably only between 10 and 15 minutes of me doing any actual work. And leg day, as we know, is the hardest of the five main muscle groups, that be, those being legs, shoulders, arms, chest, and back, if you like. Um, when, you, when you move your legs, you know, they're, they're a big muscle group to, to work them. You usually have to end up shifting your body through space quite a bit. And to do that, it requires a lot of work to be done, and that's why it's so taxing. Um, this first exercise, we do you know reps on one leg each and then double it up and this leg press is amazing it's really really smooth there's no jerky movements the angles all seem to be right so as i sort of push my feet away from my body i can really feel my glutes engaging and i don't know a lot about how these machines are designed but i've used a lot of different leg presses and this Watson leg press is really, really good. 
The other great equipment is, I think it's a Canadian brand called Atlantis. Excellent, excellent leg press that they have. Hammer strength, that's good too. If I had to pick between the three, geez, I guess I'd go this Watson leg press because, you know, it's got that splitting unilateral function. Here we are at this funny uh, pendulum leg press thing. I don't know what it's called. It basically, it's like squatting really. Um, the foot plate, I'm not sure if you'll see it in this video uh, down below. It's angled at about, oh, let's just say roughly, I don't know, 40 degrees towards me. And basically because of the way it's set up, it just works your glutes really well and your quads really, really well. Okay, so we're gonna do 18 reps here, six at the bottom, six at the top, and then six full ones. And this one is not fun. If there was one word to describe the theme of this workout, I would use the word volume. You've already noted from the first exercise we did on the leg press that we did a lot of reps. And here we are again, doing another whole bunch of reps. Um, it's just a way of exhausting the muscle. And I heard this once before from one of my colleagues when I was in chiropractic school. He was a rugby trainer. And I asked him, hey mate, how do, you, how do you get bigger legs? And he just said, volume. He said, do, do whatever you're gonna do on squats and then do twice as many. Um, the point being, just do more and more and more. Um, because they are already a very strong muscle group. They're, they're there to hold you in the upright position. So if you wanna get any results, you've gotta do lots and lots of reps. And it's interesting, I look at tennis players, tennis players like Roger Federer and Rafael Nadal and, and even Djokovic to some extent. Djokovic is quite a, well, he's extremely lean. He's not someone who you would describe as having big legs, but he's no doubt got strong legs. Rafa, he's really big in the butt, as, he would, as most people would agree. He's just, you know, when you run around on a clay court as much as he does, does, powering himself into these shots, it's no wonder he's big through the butt, you know. It's, it's, str it's a strong butt. Um, and, you know, Federer too, he's really strong through the calves um, and you know, strong, strong joints. These, these joints get exercised and worked on from a young, young age. It's volume. No, they may not be doing huge squats, but they're doing essentially lots of calisthenic work. And I don't quite know the principles that explain how somebody can get such, such a well-developed lower body from running around on a court and at the same time also get good results from just pushing weights in the gym because they're seemingly very different. One is cardio, one is resistance exercise. So why then is it that you're able to get big in both scenarios? You might say, well, you know, Rafa and Roger and Djokovic, they're also in the gym and all these other tennis players. Yeah, but they're more so on the court playing and running around. So the one consistent thing in, you know, say a bodybuilder versus, you know, tennis, professional tennis player, um, is that they do, they do lots of work. The bodybuilders pushing lots of weight, the tennis players running around on court lots. And yes, they still take on different physiques, but you know, I still reckon you could put Rafa in the gym and he'd squat a lot. Uh, he's certainly strong. Anyway, you can see me here. Uh, that's just the first set on top of the first exercise we did. And uh, I'm struggling. So getting back to the topic of volume, the theme of this workout, I notice here from post-production that each of these sets are taking just over about a minute long to complete. And another observation I've made is when I'm not doing um, sort of big volume sets on average, most sets, if I'm doing 10 or 12 reps, take only about 30 seconds. So uh, 
here we are clearly doubling the amount of workload that we're doing and as mentioned before that's what I think makes a difference in getting if not big legs at least strong legs. This angle, which is probably uh, a more bigger angle than most leg curls, allows us to engage what's called the myotatic or the stretch reflex. Okay. Every yep. time a muscle is stretched under load, it causes an immediate involuntary contraction. That's because of the Golgi tendons, right? Which are, no, because of the, it's called the stretch shortening cycle. Okay. So it's, it's, it's a, a reflex. Re reflex, so we actually engage muscle fibers without thinking about it. If you combine that reflex with a, a voluntary contraction, you get much more muscle involved. Much more bang for your buck. Yeah. And so what are we going to do now? We're going to do... We're doing one and a quarter, so we're doing a, a quarter rep, yep. followed by a full rep. Okay. Now the, the premise behind that is that the hardest part of any action is to overcome the inertia of the weight. So the, the beginning the stationary phase. A, a good example is so you've got to push a car, you've got a flat battery right out of the field. Yep. To get that car moving requires a lot of effort, a lot of energy to overcome the inertia. Yep. Same thing applies to our weights. To overcome that inertia requires more force than once that car or once that weight starts gathers momentum, it's just yep. to keep going. Okay. So we, we can go to that in that quarter rep so. And is that, does this sort of, the one and a quarter rep, does that follow the time under tension principle at all? Or well, time under tension is, Really, it's, a, it's an overuse term that people want people to understand, but it just it, it does increase the time and attention. But time and attention relates directly to the amount of work done, and then muscle hypertrophy relates to that as well. Okay. Alright, well, shall I get into it? Absolutely. Alright. So this will be the final exercise of today's workout. We're doing these one and a quarter hamstring curls. And again, from post-production, I notice here that this video is only about 21 minutes long, just shy of. And, you know, my, my slot with Paul was for one hour. And it's interesting to note that the actual amount of time working is, has only been about 20 minutes. Um, of course, you know, we need time to rest and recoup so that we can do other sets. But if you compare going to the gym and doing a 20 minute workout, to going for a run for 60 minutes, maybe even longer. Um, as hard as you may have worked in that you know, one hour session in the gym, I don't think you can, you can burn anywhere near as many calories as when you go for a run. I mean, for starters, when you run, you're displacing your entire body weight through space. That's a big ask and it's gonna be more catabolic. But it's just not something we always realise. You know, you, you think you go to the gym for an hour, but really you're only doing 20 minutes of work. If you go for a run for an hour, you really are working for that whole hour. It just depends what your goals are. Obviously, you're going to look like two different people if you, if you only run or if you only train weights in the gym. But uh, the other thing is as well, you might have noticed this workout was really only three exercises, a leg press, squat, and doing some hammy curls. It's very, very simple. But again, I can assure you, I felt pretty pretty rotten at the end of this workout. It was very difficult. And it took me almost the whole week to feel normal again from this because the workout was so effective. And I just think it's good to reflect on these things and and have that realization of the work that we're doing and you know that it you don't necessarily need to have six or seven exercises if you do three really really well you can get equally good results if not better 
finally, uh, I should just say that um, as, a, as a disclaimer, um, I don't claim to know everything when it comes to training. My forte is in chiropractic. I'm still learning, like many of us. I've outsourced the strength and conditioning knowledge to somebody whom I think is, is very, very knowledgeable and experienced. And I really enjoy the results I get with Paul. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this and please give me some feedback as to how you found it. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Yeah, thanks, mate. Good on you.